Hello everyone, I'm Shiv and you're watching F1 Error Nemesis. For those of you who are new to my channel, a quick background check. I work with the Red Bull Racing team for the 2021 and the 2022 season as a student placement aerodynamicist. And this has given me some insights into the world of F1 aerodynamics. And my objective with this aero analysis series is to give you those insights. So let's dive into it then. So after the astonishing performance at the Bahrain Grand Prix, we can pretty much say that Aston Martin has made the biggest step on the grid as compared to last year. But what is it that makes Aston Martin fast? I mean, it's a culmination of a lot of things. So in this video, we're going to look at a small little winglet that's there on the rear wing end plate of the Aston Martin rear wing. And we're going to try and see if this upwashing winglet, if its sole purpose is to just produce downforce or does it have some other intentions around it. So let's try and understand that. So to begin the discussion with, let us try and understand what is lateral diffuser expansion and why it's important. So why it is important is simply because the more expansion you have in a diffuser, the more static pressure drop you'll have at the throat of the diffuser. So if you consider this as the throat, which is basically the point at which there's a kick in the diffuser. It's also called in F1 as the diffuser kick line. If that is something that you guys have read in technical columns, this is what it means. It's basically the place where you start expanding the flow. So this is the floor basically. And this point at which you start kicking the floor up is officially where the diffuser begins. So this is the diffuser bit in side, in, you know, in side view. Right. So the place at which you have the minimum cross section for the diffuser is called as the throat of the diffuser. And that's where you normally land up getting a nice drop in static pressure because you land up expanding the flow. So the drop, so there's a drop in static pressure here. And this is obviously the ground that you see on the below side. So this would be your ground plane. Right. So now that we've established that an expansion uh, of the diffuser lands up giving you a drop in static pressure. The more the expansion, the higher the drop in static pressure. But diffusers have vertical expansion and lateral expansion. What do I mean by this? So this is basically a side view picture and this would give you a perspective of the vertical expansion of the flow. But the flow also expands laterally. That is the flow expands this way and the flow expands this way, right? So here's a view on, on the right hand side, what we've seen is a rear view and a top view. And from a rear view, the expansion would look something like this. This is around the tire and this is around the diffuser. So this is what it would look from the rear view. And from the top view, which is quite interesting, what you would see is the flow would land up doing that. Right, so there's a lateral expansion of the flow and this is what I mean. Now the amount of expansion can be limited by the amount of turning there is on the rear sidewall of the tire. Now what do I mean by this is in case your flow is not turning much and is just separating, then you would have a larger wake and that wake would not allow this flow to expand as much as you'd want to. But suddenly if you had a more attached flow going around the tire itself, then you know the wake would be slightly different and that would allow the diffuser to expand a bit more. And this is big because a small change in the rear tire sidewall separation point can allow the diffuser to expand a bit more, which can drive floor loading throughout. Now let us try and understand how the winglet itself would encourage an increased attachment around the sidewall or the rear face of the tire. So you see, normally the flow would start detaching on the rear sidewall tire quite easily because the flow has to navigate a sharp turn and that introduces an adverse pressure gradient which lands up separating the flow quite easily. Now the question is, what can we do to improve it? So this is a drawing with the tire by itself without the winglet. And what that would do is it would separate a bit more prematurely because you have nothing supporting the turning of the flow around the tire. So now that you have a winglet around the tire sidewall, the first thing it would do is it would drop the base pressure around itself, but it would also influence the pressure, it would drop the static pressure slightly around the tire sidewall. Now this would of course encourage more flow turning because the adverse pressure gradient that we spoke about would be 
lower and not just that because you have a build up of a slightly higher pressure up here you would encourage the flow turning even a bit more because what you'll end up doing is because you've dropped the static pressure on the tire sidewall and the flow sees a high pressure region and a low pressure region what the flow would tend to do is it would tend to go down and around so you land up getting more turning so in top view you would get a situation like this where you have the flow turning around the tire sidewall a bit more which would delay the separation and thus your wake would be a bit more outboard like in this case which would allow more lateral flow expansion and then this lateral flow expansion would allow a higher static pressure drop at the throat of the diffuser which again would load up the floor itself but also would power up the vortex structures that go through the diffuser and obviously this is a balance act because you can overpower the vortex structures and blow them up also so my thoughts on this is yes it's an upwashing winglet so you will increase your downforce locally but because you'll end up dropping the static pressure around the tire sidewall and um, because of the pressure distribution that the winglet itself would create you would end up getting a more attached portion of the lower sidewall of the rear tire so that would give you increased lateral expansion which would make your diffuser work better so yeah this was my take on the aston martin rear wing end plate winglet and i might be right and i also might be wrong you know we never know but as aerodynamicists we try to speculate so if you like this video give me a like and if you love the content on this channel hit a subscribe so that you don't miss out the next video thank you have a good one